Mr. Manzi. Genocide in the street. And I can't cover that. Mr. Obey your oath. Officer, obey your oath. Will you get, listen to me. If I'm on the other side, get your hands off. Okay, then I'll take okay. Put your phone down. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Efren, are you catching this? Yeah. Once again. You can have people pretend genocide you. in the streets of our democracy. You. They're, 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 they're under arrest for refusing to leave premises, okay, Mr. It's a public place. Okay, this property. is literally the public square. Thank you. Oh, that was video of conservative Canadian journalist David Menzies, who's been arrested again, this time on charges of trespass. He says that's impossible because he was on public property. So he was confronting anti-Israel protesters at City Hall in Toronto, Canada, when he says police rushed in and arrested him. He's since been released, but he's just one of many Canadians that could soon face life in prison if a new bill becomes law for what the government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calls hate speech. Rebel News reporter David Menzies, whom you see in the video, joins us now yet again um, over the same seemingly the same issue here arrested once again uh, David um, talk to us about what we saw in the video you were going to ask a group of protesters some questions which led to what you say where you were assaulted and were you on public property and then you were arrested can you walk us through this Absolutely, and thanks for having me, uh, Sean and Emma. And by the way, I saw your previous interview with Jonathan Cho, who was getting roughed up in Seattle by Antifa, and he had to call the police. Uh, but look at our situation. What if it's the police who are acting like Antifa and arresting members of the independent press? Uh, on Sunday, uh, my cameraman, Efren Monsanto, and I went down to Toronto City Hall uh, the square is called Nathan Phillips Square. Um, guys, it is quite literally the town square. This is where people go uh, to get on a soapbox and do what have you. And there was a large um, attendance of um, people who were there to, uh, well, it was a vigil, really, for the six-month anniversary of that horrific massacre that occurred in Israel back on October 7th of last year. And the keynote spe speaker was the leader of the opposition, uh, conservative leader Pierre Polyev, who will most likely be the next prime minister in Canada. So, of course, that's newsworthy. And what do we see? An, a counter-demonstration by the usual suspects, the pro-Hamas people, who, once again, chanting genocide. The, from the river to the sea, Intifada, go back to Europe, go back to Poland. And I thought, this is really gross. Why would you crash what, a, in effect, what is a, a almost like a funeral? And I went over to them. I mean, they are demonstrating in a public place. They've got signs and flags and loudspeakers and what have you. And I couldn't even get a question out. My key question is, why would you be here on this day uh, with this somber occasion uh, being marked? Uh, my cameraman Efren and I were assaulted by them in full view of Toronto Police Service cops. The cops came. I said, oh, thank goodness for that. Uh, we can restore some decorum. Oh, no, I had it all wrong, guys. Uh, they were there to arrest me for trespass and breach of peace. But how can this be? Nathan Phillips Square, like I said, is literally the town public square in Toronto. It, it's not sure. uh, in All right. private property in terms of a, a home or even a shopping yeah, we, mall. We've and, heard you and they hauled me away.